So your your study looked particularly at persistent and post-treatment Lyme disease. Well, yeah. So we called it that because um, in the, the from our, uh, so a couple of things. One is I didn't want to um, allude to the fact that one should treat acute, you know, right. like an acute case with just cannabis. So. But also um, in the data set, these are people that are, are, you know, filling out a form saying I have Lyme disease. So I don't know what stage they're at. Mm. Um, but so uh, it's, that's seemed like a, a large enough grouping that's it's kind of uh, safe to assume that, but that they're either treating persistent cases or post-treatment, but there's no reason that some of them couldn't have been acute, but it's just unlikely if they're just in that short treatment window of two weeks on doxycycline, that they would enter this world of treating it with cannabis, right? Yeah, right. The symptoms that we're tracking, like anxiety, inflammatory pain, sleep, those kinds of things are, are common in the later stages of life. Um, and again, if you're treating it with cannabis, you've probably already been through the standard round. These are, those are assumptions, that, but we can't interview these, these patients. So we're really just looking at, they say they have Lyme and they're treating X symptom and, um, and the, the tool helps them rate it on, on different scales. So what's interesting though, is as ubiquitous as Lyme is, and as much as cannabis is being looked at, nobody had ever looked at these two together before. Um, and if you, which is really surprising because if you do a, a just a simple Google search, there's a lot um, where every dispensary is telling you you should treat your Lyme disease with cannabis and lots really? of, lots of uh, doctors' websites have, you know, blog posts about using cannabis to help with Lyme disease. And lots of Lyme blogs and, and Lyme informational websites tell you CBD and cannabis are good symptomatic treatments, but absolutely nobody has done any academic or formal uh, look at it until now, which is really weird. Um, and, you know, we're doing a retrospective sort of naturalistic study, um, and we're continuing to examine more symptoms and, and, and kind of parse out the data. Um, because it really is uh, effective and what's, and it's interesting that it affects people. So the things that Lyme people, sorry, Lyme disease is often a root cause of things like rheumatoid, mm -hmm. MS, ALS. It can be mistaken for Parkinson's, um, if for lupus, fibromyalgia. These are all things people commonly use cannabis to treat. Right. So very, so... And they're not always caused by Lyme, but Lyme is one of the potential causes of these syndromes. Um, and so that was very interesting to me too. Um, and so what we found though, is that people who like use it for arthritic, for inflammatory pain, if they have Lyme, respond differently than people who are using it for inflammatory pain who don't have Lyme. Hmm. Uh, same thing with anxiety. How so? So like higher THC formulations were found um, more relieving for anxiety than mixed cannabinoid ratios um, with in people with Lyme. Whereas when we look at overall on the other end, it's, it's usually the other way around, like a one-to-one -one or a high, higher CBD ratio formula will be better. Better for Lyme? Uh, for anxiety. I see. So the THC is more helpful for Lyme? Because it's better relieving inflammation, right? Got it. Um, in, in a sense. Or and so it's interesting. Uh, so uh, there's a lot. I mean, I, when we talk about the data, there's a lot I can I can say about that. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, first of all, you know, where where are you getting this data? Like how? Ah, yes. Where's it so coming there's from? A, there's a great um, uh, app and website called StrainPrint, uh, StrainPrint.ca. It's a Canadian uh, company, um, and, but they also track a fair amount of American products as well. So it's a really great um uh, use tracking tool. Um, so, um, and I, so I suggest to people regardless, because it's, it's helpful because, it, you know, you might say, say you use, you use and you find, oh, my pain's really, really, but it also then will ask you, are you feeling tired? Are you feeling, um, you know, a little irritable or upset stomach? So it helps you note side effects as well and help dial in. So it kind of help dial in your dosing that way. Um, but it asks people to identify their disease or, or diagnosis, and then it will give a list of symptoms commonly associated with those, but then you can also choose your own. It tracks up to like 70 different symptoms. Hmm. That's a lot. Um, 
And then uh, you rate it how you're feeling on a scale of one to ten before. You put in what you took, and then and then rate after. And so he he's got for if you're in Canada, for example, all the products in dispensaries are loaded into that app. So it tracks all the testing data and stuff like that. So Hello. it's also useful for producers and and looking and studies to say you know what cannabinoid ratio might be good for this ailment and that sort of thing. So that that's a, it's interesting that way. So we were able to track a lot of different uh ratios of uh products that people used um and in this one we were now is that down to like the batch level too yeah yeah wow. yeah if if it's a company that's regularly submitting their stuff yeah yeah that's awesome um yeah and so that it's 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 useful in oh so many ways it's really cool yeah, right um so the the um we looked at a, a combined of inhaled and edible products so we kind of put it all in one, but it would be interesting to parse that out in the future. Um, and we looked at uh, a range of cannabinoid ratios of including THC only, CBD only, and then naturalistic ratios. So you might, in the data, you might see like a 25 to one. That's that's a very high THC um, cannabis, but it's still a naturalistic ratio. So it's got some measurable amount of THC and, or CBD and other cannabinoids in there. But we're really just looking at THC and CBD as well, and which is something I think is often not enough, but it's mm -hmm. what we have more often than not. Um, and uh, and going in all the one-to-one -one and, and on the other end of things. Um, and what we found in this data set was there was an overwhelming preference for THC, very, very strong preference and, and very high in the THC only. I note that to a product availability, sure. um, what's, what's pushed in dispensaries, you know, there's a higher margin in distillate and and uh for some in some ways sometimes so um and then the convenience factor um there as well so i think that's part of it um and then that's also primarily what's in edibles right they use distillate in edibles as well because then they can have an even measure of dosage even though it may not be the best delivery method so while that was used the most often not in every case was it the most preferred but it always scored very high um but when you when you look at other ones, what often scored equally high um, and uh, or better with less dosages um, uh, was naturalistic ratios or one to one. Hmm. Um, CBD only often also didn't perform very well in general.